Hello, and welcome back to my TypeScript course. I'm Benny, and in this episode, we'll be discussing how to install Node.js, which enables us to download TypeScript as a package for our application. We will install Node like professionals, using the Node version manager to switch between different versions of Node.js. Additionally, we'll explore the various types of dependencies. So let's dive right in. There are multiple ways to get started with TypeScript. In the previous episode, we have used the TypeScript Playground, but now we want to set up TypeScript on our own system. To achieve this, we can install TypeScript using NPM, the package manager of Node.js. The Node package manager allows us to easily install, manage and share JavaScript code, or even binaries like TypeScript's compiler. NPM is included with Node.js and comes installed with it by default. We have to install Node.js because we need a runtime environment for executing JavaScript outside the web browser. The simplest method for installing Node.js is by downloading the official installer from their website. It's highly recommended that you opt for the LTS version as it offers long-term support. However, the NPM team suggests using a version manager such as NVM to install Node.js. For the experts of you, I will quickly show how Node can be installed using NVM. If you are using Mac OS, Linux, or the Windows subsystem for Linux, you can obtain NVM by opening nvm.sh in your browser. This URL will redirect you to the NVM repository on GitHub, where you can find instructions for installation. To start with, you'll need to execute the installation script in your terminal. Once you've run the installation script, reload your terminal so that the NVM command can be found. After completing this step, you should be able to run NVM version. In the case of Windows, an executable file can be downloaded from the NVM Windows repository by Cory Butler. By the way, if you're curious about running Linux within your Windows installation, I have some good news for you. I've created a tutorial on how to get started with the Windows subsystem for Linux, and I'll provide a link to it in the video description. Once NVM is downloaded and installed, we can use the terminal to access its functionalities by entering NVM. It will list all available commands. By typing NVM install LTS, we can get the most recent LTS version of Node. Additionally, NVM use allows us to switch between different Node versions if we ever need to. You should now be able to execute Node-Version on your terminal. If that's the case, Congratulations! This means you have successfully installed Node.js along with the Node Package Manager, NPM, and the Node Package Runner, NPX. NPX stands for Node Package Execute and can run binaries from our installed packages without having to install them globally. We will explore this feature shortly. For now, let's create our very first NPM package. Creating an NPM package is simple. We just need to create a new directory navigate into it, and execute the command npm init-y. The y flag automatically answers all wizard questions, eliminating the need to specify a project name or version number. After running this command, we'll notice that a single file has been created, the package.json file. This file is essential for every Node.js project because it specifies the entry point of our code listed in the main property. In addition to other project details, the package.json file can also contain the list of dependencies for our project. There are multiple types of dependencies. Direct dependencies, development dependencies, and peer dependencies. For our purposes, we only need direct and development dependencies. Direct dependencies are the ones that our project needs during its runtime. Development dependencies are dependencies that our code only needs during the design time. As we learned in the previous episode, TypeScript is used during the design phase, so we can install it as a development dependency. To download a development dependency, simply execute the command npm, install dash dash, save dash dev, followed by the name of the dependency you want to install. In our case, we want to install TypeScript as a development dependency, so we would run npm install save dev typescript. Because developers like to save time, 
there is also a shorter command alias, which is npm i dash capital D TypeScript. After the dependency has been downloaded from the npm registry, we can see a dev dependencies object in our package.json file, which holds an entry for TypeScript. When examining the contents of our project directory, we can also see a package lock JSON file and a node underscore modules directory. We'll discuss the details of these new files in a moment. For now, let's download a code editor so we can fully embrace this new era of coding. For this course, I'll be using Visual Studio Code, but I may be a little bit biased as I am a contributor to it. Feel free to use any code editor of your choice. Now let's open up our project in VS Code and take a look. At the top of the list, we'll notice our node underscore modules directory. It is where all downloaded dependencies are installed. Within this directory, we can locate a directory for the TypeScript dependency, as well as a .bin directory. The .bin directory contains executable files for any locally installed project dependencies. This is where NPX comes into play. NPX can execute locally installed packages. By opening our terminal, we can run npx tsc dash dash version, which instructs npx to execute the TypeScript compiler, short tsc, and ask it for its version. When working with TypeScript, it's important to ensure that VS Code is using the correct version. You must inform VS Code to use the version of TypeScript installed in your workspace. Another tool that ships together with the TypeScript dependency is the TypeScript language server, short TS server. The TS server is a language service that provides intelligent code completion and error checking. It can operate in the background and provide real-time feedback to our IDE on the code being written. The TypeScript compiler, TSCC itself, is a tool that compiles TypeScript code into JavaScript code, which can then be run in a browser or Node.js environment. If you're interested in learning more about TypeScript's internals, I suggest checking out Andrew Branch's article, which I'll link in the description. For us, it's time to go through a quick quiz. Can you explain what NVM, NPM, and NPX are? What is the difference between a dependency and a development dependency? Which type of dependency should you select to install TypeScript? How can you initialize a new NPM package? What is contained in the package.json file? What is the role of TSC and TS server? If you need a quick refresher to find the correct answer, simply replay this video at the chapter that corresponds to the question. In the next video, we'll take a quick walkthrough of how NPM manages dependencies and the concept of semantic versioning. We'll explore the tilde and caret symbols and learn how to pin versions of dependencies.